this is a Leica Q, specifically a Leica Q2, more specifically a Leica Q2 Mono. So this is a camera I've wanted to get my hands on for absolutely years. So yeah, to say I'm 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 chuffed to, get to, to have one now is is an understatement. I'm not gone all hipster. <laughs> I should be sitting here in a with a beanie hat and a check shirt, really, shouldn't I? But no, I don't own this camera. It was actually a loan from MBP. Um, the reason being is because I did a competition in Cambridge a couple of weeks ago. I think it might be yeah two weeks ago, and um, 24 hour photography competition called Photo 24. Leave the details for that in the in the description so you can have a look at that for next year. And MVP sponsored that event, and they emailed me to see if I wanted to um, borrow any kit. And straight away, I've always wanted to to have a play with a, a, a Leica Mono. So um, as soon as that opportunity came through, I was straight on. <laughs> And within 30 seconds of receiving the email, I was straight on the on the go to them to uh, see if they'd lend me one of these. And I've had it since then. So yeah, I've owned I've had the owned it. I wish I've had it two weeks. It goes back tomorrow. And yes, bit of a spoiler. I'm going to be very very sad when this thing goes back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Leica Q2. Um, it's kind of a generic opinion across the Leica Q, Leica Q2, the Leica Q2 Mono. And as recording this now, the Leica Q3 has just been out probably two weeks. So my opinion is pretty much going to cover, I, I've never touched it at the Q3, but it's pretty much going to cover most Leica Qs. So yeah, why do I choose this? It's the mainly the monochromatic sensor, the mono only. It doesn't shoot colour, it's a black and white only camera. And that means that you get absolutely ridiculous uh, high ISO capabilities on this. You can shoot 50,000 ISO on this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. This is a camera I've always wanted to buy, actually. And now they're coming down in price because of the Q3s out. I thought the mono Q2 used might be achievable. It's not, but I thought it might be. But um, I really, really wanted to give the ergonomics, give the lens, give everything Leica a go, because I've never really shot. I've had a few goes, but I've never really shot much Leica. So I wanted to see what it was all about and see if I would... Uh, like the experience. Now, of course, I'm going to be comparing this to my Fuji cameras. I've got my X-T3, X-T5, X-100V filming on the, X100, uh, the X-T4. Now, I've been a professional Fuji shooter for, let's say, nine years. Um, and I love, the, I love the Fuji ecosystem. I absolutely love the cameras. But um, but I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you whether or not I think that the money's justified and all that, whether the shooting experience is there, whether the files are there, whether the optics are there. And... I have to say, most people would compare, because this is a fixed lens, the lens doesn't come off, this is a 28mm fixed lens camera, and because the lens doesn't come off it, most people compare it to the X100V. Well, I wouldn't do that myself. I would ignore the fact the lens doesn't come off it, because I'd buy this camera for the 28mm, because that's basically what you're paying for, you get a free camera. These things are like six grand, the lens on its own is about six grand from Leica. So you're basically getting a free camera at the back of it. So just accept it for a 28mm, and um, I wouldn't really compare it to that. I would compare it to the X-T5 because this thing's 50 megapixel, this thing, the X-T5 is 40 megapixel. And I don't think it's fair to compare a crop sensor 26 just because it's got a fixed lens. I don't think that's very fair. But the, I don't own it yet. This lens, this camera's actually made me want to buy it, but the new 18 mil, yeah, 18 mil 1.4 WR for the Fuji is supposed to be spectacular. And after playing with this focal length, I'm actually very, very tempted to get something for the X-T5 just so that I've got that kind of same experience as I've, I've, I've become to love with this camera. Going through this video, I'm gonna show you a load of the files I've taken on this camera. Now, I've, do, I've, I've done some commercial work, I've done some events, I've done some products, I've done um, an event for Porsche two days ago. Um, and on occasion, I've regretted it being black and white, but I always took as many photographs with this camera as possible just to see what it was like in different professional environments, just to see whether or not it could replace something like the X100V, which stays around my neck. So I tried to see whether or not the, X, the, the Q2 would replace that camera in my in my arsenal because this is a leaf shutter and it's super important that it's a leaf shutter and the x the q i'm not going to do this all right the q2 is a leaf shutter as well not many people know this as, a, as an impression there um but the, the Leica q is a q is a, a leaf shutter lens as well so it's great for flash great for uh, fast shutter speeds it's great for silent shooting there's lots of advantage to a leaf shutter so because i photograph a lot of piano concerts the leaf shutter is really really important to me so that's why the x100v is invaluable it stays around my neck and i've always got a camera that can be completely silent and isn't affected by ambient light so i wanted to see how the q was going to um, was going to fit into into that ecosystem and uh, whether or not it would work for me right then what i love about the thing the 
the, the actual shooting experience is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I absolutely, I didn't think I was going to get on with the comfort aspect of it, but I absolutely love it. It's one of those cameras, much like the XT, the X100V. Um, it's one of those cameras that you enjoy picking up. You enjoy shooting. I mean, you can notice I've got a grip on this one because I find it difficult to hold without the grip. But it's one of those cameras that you want to pick up and shoot. You, I'm not. This video is not going to diss the Fuji system at all. If it comes across like that, it's absolutely not the intention. The XT, the X100V is one of those cameras that makes you want to shoot. It makes you want to love photography. It makes you want to be creative. And it's so versatile, so powerful. It really is incredible value really for 1500 quid whatever they are so um obviously this is six grand so it's got you know, 1500 quid six grand <laughs> this has really got to be a lot better hasn't it to justify but the shooting experience the hyperfocal distance on there the um it's got ios in the lens i'll touch on that again in a minute it's got image stabilization in the lens which is something i wish not in the lens but it wished that the x100v had that i had some form of um the sharpness of the files is just breathtaking. I just, I just love even at 1.7 wide open, the sharpness of the files are absolutely fantastic. So I don't actually remember many misfocuses. If I've misfocused, I think it's probably my fault. The single autofocus is absolutely fantastic on it. It's it's a it doesn't hunt. It's not as quick as, as something like the XT5. Uh, with with one of the new primes like the 33 which is one of my favorite ever lenses the 33 mil on the xt5 is just breathtaking the afc is far better than the xt than the x100v the af the continuous autofocus on the leica is way better than the x100v and not only that the build quality is just like there's no movement in anything everything's rock solid it's just rock solid startup time is not the quickest but it's ready so it's not the quickest of starting up but it's just rock solid, everything. Everything is rock solid. So if nothing else, you're paying for the build quality. I've got to say also, when you're editing the files, when you're in Lightroom with it, this is an invariant ISO sensor. So as I said at the beginning of the video, it shoots ridiculously clean ISO. So at 1600 ISO, you punch in 200%, there's no grain, no noise, no nothing. It's surreal. It is surreal. When you're editing, if you take a photograph at like 800 ISO and whack it up to what three stops, there's just no noise in it at all i mean coming from a fuji camera crop sensor of of course crop sensor versus full frame isn't fair anyway but the difference and these are iso invariants as well but the difference in clarity in clarity crispness that the, 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 there's so much uh, more noise and you don't even notice it really when you're used to shooting it but when you compare it to this the flipping it's so clear it's so clean it's unbelievable it if nothing else that's one of the selling features for me and i wasn't even expecting that to be a feature so before we get into the uh, the clickbaity part of the video, what I don't like about the Leica, I'm just going to mention my uh, street photography zine. So if you're new to the channel and or you want to support the channel if you're a viewer for for some time, you can help me out by checking out my zine. Now at this point now, I was supposed I wasn't supposed to be away last week, but at this point now, issue three of my street photography zine was supposed to be out this week and it's delayed for a week. So apologies for that. Um, but yes, uh, F8 Street Photography Magazine. Um, issues one and two are available. I've got a guest scene on the website as well. And uh, yeah, do check them out. It's an amazing way of, of supporting the channel. So if you if you get anything from my uh, Street Photography videos over the time, that's a really, 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 really kind way of you supporting the channel. It's an informative magazine. It's not just pictures. There's a lot of text and stories behind the pictures, lessons I've learned and mistakes I've made, that sort of thing. So yeah, do check out F8 Magazine and we'll get straight back into the video. Okay, so what don't we like about this beautiful camera? Now, actually, this isn't clickbait. There is a few, there is a few things about it. The first one and the main one, flipping rattles. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't. The build quality of this thing is absolutely breathtaking. And you've got this. That's the image stabilization, the optical image stabilization in the lens, which I didn't know it had. I thought it was like a digital image stabilization, um, but it's got optical image stabilization. I don't quite understand why you'd want that. It doesn't have a leaf, sh um, it does have a leaf shutter. It doesn't have a built-in ND. So if it had a built-in ND, I'd be really excited about that combination because I love the built-in ND, the three-stop built-in filter that you've got in the X100V. If you've not tried the built-in ND of these and you've got one of these, give it a go. It's such a handy feature. Slow shutters and stuff. So this doesn't have a built-in ND, but it's got optical image stabilization. But it... <laughs> I just can't get past that rattle. And I thought mine was broken when, it, when I first got it and I opened it up. I was like, that's a fault with this. It's definitely broken. So I had to do a bit of 
bit of running around to a few of my friends who own them and ask them if there's there's did it as well and i just can't believe it does it so that's um that's one of the main things that bugs me. The other book thing that bugs me is if you're an autofocus there like that, there's no way of assigning back button focus. Now, if you're if you're familiar with my channel, then I most of the time I'm I'm shooting with my street photography. I'm shooting with this camera, and I put it in manual focus. So I flip it in manual focus on the side there, and um, then on the back of the camera I focus with that button there. So I don't focus with the shutter button. I always back button focus for street photography, sort of f5.6, f8, f11 are the two meter of, or infinity. Now I get that on this lens you can just come out of autofocus, you can go two meters, you can go to infinity, but there's no, that button on the back there, which you see that button on the back there, that button there, you cut that sets what they call the frame lines from the 28 mil to the 35 mil to the 50 to the 70, 75, whatever. Um, I, I don't. I, I'm not, never going to use that button. I, I don't like that idea. That's a gimmick to me. This is a 28 mil lens. Doesn't you can crop it, do what you want with it. The croppability is insane. I get that. It's impressive because it's so sharp. It's such a good lens. But it's still a 28 mil field of view. You're cropping. You're not getting a 50 mil or a 75. So for me, I'm just going to use this camera as a 28 mil camera. End of. I'm never going to use that. I like it in 35 mil because you get a bit of an allowance around the frame, so you can see when something's coming into your shot. But to be honest with you, it's still you're still getting a 28 mil. That that's probably where at the maximum I'd use it. But I'd rather use that button as a back button focus button, and you just can't. I can't believe <laughs> it's like the one of the best street photography cameras ever made, and it doesn't do back button focusing. I just find that absolutely mental. What's even weirder is that. The, the Q3 doesn't, I don't think, do back button focus either. I, I just can't believe that Leica have omitted back button focus off this camera. It's probably the main thing that would put me off buying this, actually, because I'm such an advocate of back button focus, especially for street photography, and especially for something like a 28mm. A 28mm focal length, it just... Well, you've got the hot, you've got the scale on the top there. You just get used to it, don't you? you I suppose that's what that is. You just get used to it. I'm, I'm probably moaning over nothing really. The file size of these things, as I mentioned, is massive. They're 90 meg. So I bought a 128 gig card, a fast card, and I just can't believe I'm shooting a me medium or single shot. I don't do the high. F I bought one, one of the reasons I would buy it is because it does 10 frames a second. I think, I think it does 20 frames a second in electronic shutter, but obviously you've got to worry about rolling shutters then. So 10 frames a, sec a second at 90 mega file, right? The card takes forever to clear and the files, there's no compression mode. So in 2023, wherever we are, this, well, I, th I think this is like a two year old camera, isn't it? so say 2020, either way, the iPhone, the the, um, the the XT5, well, all the Fuji cameras have got lossless compression from, from as far as I remember. I just don't, I'm, it blows my mind that there's no compression mode on this. And yes, the editing, the editing capabilities in post in Lightroom are phenomenal. If that's, I don't think that's why they're so much better because it's not lo lossless compressed or there's no, there's no compression on there at all. I just can't believe that there is no compression mode on this thing. It is crazy. There's no natural live view on the camera, which is crazy. Now, I, on my Fuji, in fact, on all my, yeah, all my Fujis, where possible, that button there, if you can see that button at the top there, that I've got set. So when I press it, it gives me a natural flat looking um preview of what the raw would look like but that's not the important bit it's good for, for low light stuff where you can see texture in like walls and dark areas and shadows and that sort of thing but it's better because the histogram becomes more accurate so when you're in uh, like one of your acros or a classic chrome or something on the fuji you get this lovely punchy preview but then when you look at the raws later, the raws might be a lot darker than what you were looking at. So it, it, it could present some problems. And also you think you might have clipped um, where actually the raw is fine. So that that, that flat button, flat up, uh, view button for me is really powerful. I, I, I shoot all my events that are low light in flat view and I just toggle between the two just to see what classic chrome will look like. Now, the reason I think it doesn't have it on this um, is that the, um, the raws aren't flat then they pretty much don't need editing. When you put the raws in Lightroom, they're just, there's not I suppose there's a three part problem to this. There's no lateral eye view, the raws aren't flat, and that means that the dynamic range for the highlights is just abysmal really. So you'll very, very easily clip the, the, the highlights of this camera. And for, for the monochrome, I thought that would be something that you absolutely aren't gonna get because obviously the irony is if you shot film, you can't really crop, sorry, you can't really clip 
highlights, unless you're pushing the, the film three or four or five stops, the dynamic range in film in black and white is ridiculous. So it's quite ironic that it's the opposite with this. You can brighten in the photo, you can brighten the files up till Kingdom Come. It's absolutely incredible. But if you overexpose them, they're buggered. So because there's no flat version, there's no flat raw. Um, it's a real shame. And I always, always, always in, underexpose these photographs by one stop at least. If I'm, you know. Absolutely, because there's there's so much dynamic range for you to lift it up. There's no point shooting at normal exposure. You might as well just brighten every single photograph up because you're not going to lose anything. So that was the way I was shooting, and that was the way I got the better response because I didn't have the flat raw file to to, to deal with, which is a bit of a shame. I love the damn thing. I would own one, but the Fujis have got not only have they got natural eye view, they've also got a DR four hundred on the bottom of the Fuji. There, you've got this DR setting, so I can go to DR four hundred. So DR four hundred, if you see at the bottom of the camera, though, is 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 so powerful. Um, it just me obviously it lifts my ISO up, but it gives me a really really high dynamic range raw file or JPEG um, for editing in post. And I really that's coming handy for weddings and stuff when you've got like a black suit and a white dress. It's so handy. Okay, the aperture ring. Now I like it that it's there because it does work nicely there. But I've knocked it so many times. It's really quite light. It it feels lovely to use, but it I've knocked it. I've been at f eleven. And I've looked down and it's been at F8 and it's, or it's been at F16 on a few occasions when I was doing this photo 24 thing in Cambridge. Um, now that's not a problem if you're shooting ISO auto, but I, I didn't find ISO auto was very good on this. Now I wasn't shooting spot metering, I was always using like the, the evaluative or matrix, whatever you want to call it, where it does the whole frame. But I found the auto ISO to, to be really inconsistent, it just sort of moves around too much. So I was largely shooting this in manual, so but press that button, change that um, the ISO on the back of there, and then I've got my shutter speed and my, my aperture there. Now if I knock that then, it's obviously going to massively affect the RAWs, it's, there's not going to be any compensation for it, so that was a bit of a frustration, but not nothing major. The price, now they're not worth the money. There's people out there that say that these are a bargain because you're getting a six grand lens and whatever, you're not... <laughs> It's it's a it's a fantastic lens, it is, but my Nikon lenses aren't six grand and they're they're as sharp. My Nikon S lenses and my 50mm prime Nikon lens, in my opinion, is as sharp as this. Um and that's not six grand, that's eight hundred quid. <laughs> so I, I don't I don't agree when people say that these are a bargain at six grand because you're getting a six grand le lens with a free camera. Talking nonsense. But I would buy one used from someone like MBP uh, when it comes down to about three, three and a half. I would absolutely jump on one. Whether or not I'd buy the black and white or the colour, I don't know. I really would prefer the black and white, but I think the colour one would be more uh, forgiving so I could use it for work and stuff like that. Um, but is it worth six grand? Not a chance. Not a chance. I just don't agree with that at all. You can. It's just, the, the shooting experience is, is stunning. It is second to none, actually. It's really, really amazing. But... Um, no, it's not worth the money. It's worth about three and a half. <laughs> if, uh, I know, let me let me know in the comments. I mean, if you've got loads of money, if you're watching this, and I know some very very wealthy people who own these things, and they've got like five of them. So obviously, in fact, I know two or three people that have got the M11s, and they're ridiculous money. So um, yeah, no, <laughs> just not worth the money. There's no USB-C on it, which. Uh, I hate the fact that I can't just bring one battery in a power bank and just sit in a coffee shop and just charge it. You've got to bring the big, you've got to bring the battery charger because you're not going to buy. Oh, look at this. How cool is that? It's cool, isn't it? You can't, you're not going to buy multiple of these batteries. They're 300 quid a pop. They're Panasonic batteries, annoyingly, but they're 300 quid a pop. So you're not going to buy loads here. I don't even think I'd buy another one. I'd just bring the power, I'd bring the charger around with me and just plug it into the coffee shop, which is what I was doing in Cambridge. Um, the batteries on it is very good though. I don't, I don't, I don't have any issues with the battery itself. I just have the big issue with the. It's not just the battery though. It's the, it's the flipping ecosystem. It's anything. If you want to buy the thumbs up thing, if you want to buy, I don't know, flipping. I bet you if you wanted to buy a, a, a lens wipe with Leica written on it, it's fifty quid or something stupid. Um, I just don't agree with that. Uh, single SD card, absolutely. I, I think on the Q3 it's been changed now. So I couldn't, I couldn't spend six grand on a camera that I wanted to use professionally that had a, sing a single SD card. Absolutely no chance. It's just uh, it's just not going to happen. Um, when it's in ISO auto, so if you're in manual sh manual aperture, manual shutter, 
and then you're using ISO auto. When you turn that dial, it changes the shutter speed. Now, I'm assuming, I'm probably wrong on this, I'm assuming there's a way you can go into the menu so that when you turn that, it changes the compensation of your ISO, not the shutter speed, because at the minute, this camera doesn't work particularly well in manual, manual, auto, if that makes any sense. I would use it for fully, fully manual, absolutely. Most of the time, most of the time. So how does it compare, let's get to the crux of it, how does it compare to the Fuji? How does it compare to the Fuji? Um, now, I, as I said, would compare it to the X-T5 with the new 18 mm f1.4, weather sealed. And in my opinion, that's actually a more, if ignore the fact that the lens comes off, that's not the point, right? We're just, we're talking at, you know, imagine you've only bought the X-T5 and that one lens. It's a fixed lens then, isn't it? You've only got one lens, that's a fixed lens. So. Ignoring the fact that the lens comes off on that and ignoring that camera, I don't think it's fair to compare it to that. I think it's there's things about it that, that make it like comparable to the X100V, but no, for me, it's that. So the full frame versus crop argument, you've got to have that with yourself. For me, I'm one of the people that wish that Fuji would bring out a full frame version of this. Absolutely. I'd love a full frame version of this from Fuji. Now, they're not going to bring out uh, an XT range in full frame. In fact, I'm <laughs> wishful thinking anyway in it really but I, I am one of the people that wish that Fuji bought out full frame so I can't compare full frame to crop because in my opinion uh, crop, uh, crop just isn't as 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 powerful as full frame so uh, mate, you, you can let me know in the comments if you disagree but I've been shooting this thing I shot 15 years pro professionally with full frame before Fuji I've shot nine years with Fuji and I'm sticking to be guns the full frame camera is definitely the more powerful sensor so um, I'm definitely definitely sticking to that now it has made me want to buy the new I've got the new 33 and I've got the new 56 they're outstanding lenses and I am going to stick in my basket as soon as I can afford it I am going to buy the 18 mil and that's because of this lens now when I first did the review on this camera I didn't like this focal length it was one of the reasons why I wouldn't buy it but having sh having shot with it for a couple in fact it took me two days I shot with it for two days and I actually, I, I started to wish that this, when I was using this for events, I started to wish that this was slightly wider. So I absolutely would buy the 18mm f1.4 for the X-T5 to liken it, if you pardon the pun, um, to, to this camera. Um, yeah, because I have got used to that 28mm field of view and I never used to like that. They've both got macro mode, so that's got a dial there you can choose, you can, you can, you can turn it to macro. So you turn that dial there and it, it goes, and it's flipping so nice moving that. Um, now, I'll show some photographs of how close it goes without being in macro, macro mode, but on the Fuji, you don't need to turn any dial. The macro mode on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It's really, really cool. So I'll, I'll put some photographs up just showing how much closer, I know it's a 35 mil versus 28, but you can see how much closer this gets to the plant in my garden and it's quite incredible but that the macro mode on this is absolutely fantastic the, the widest it goes is 2.8 though in macro mode but it is absolutely fantastic really really powerful especially with that cropping mobility and man are the files sharp in macro mode as well the files the Leica files are sharper they are clearer there's no two ways about it there's your full frame versus crop argument again and i just think that irrelevant to what iso you're using that the Leica files and that that is going to be down to the very expensive lens and, and whatnot but even at fast shutter speeds um i haven't tried the i haven't tried a slow shutter handheld actually um at fast shutter speeds the same shutter say a thousandth of a second on there and there the Leica wipes the floor sharpness with this absolutely no two ways about it and this is a brilliant little lens fantastic little lens from fuji the xt5 i did some comparisons on the 16 to 55 f8 trying to compare it to this at 18 mil on the f8 and again the 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 Leica just wipes the floor with it but it's gonna it's you know it's full frame high megapixels and it's a, a shit and expensive <laughs> lens um but yeah it, it's all about balance though it's about working out what's important to you now the JPEGs in the Fuji are insane, so they're incredibly sharp. I never touch Fuji JPEGs, I usually use the RAWs. Always use the RAWs. So I'm comparing Leica RAWs to Fuji RAWs, whereas if you were just a JPEG shooter, the, the Fuji JPEGs are gonna be sharp enough. They're blinking fantastic, especially if you're using the new primes. Bear that in mind. Right, I would mention the cost of the ecosystem for Leica, but you've got Fuji third-party, uh, third party companies for Fuji that are just so cheap. I mean, I've got at the minute, what's that? That's a JJC lens hood, it's probably 30 quid. That is a small rig L bracket, which is probably 50 or 60 quid. Um, that's the original Fuji thing on the front. That's a JJC uh, bracket for the um, X100 quid. That's about 30 quid. 
And there's another one. That's probably JJC as well, isn't it? I don't know. Whatever that. No, that's a cheapy Amazon one, tenner. So the ecosystem and the batteries. I mean, I wouldn't recommend buying non-Fuji batteries, but the ecosystem for things like thumbs up. I don't use one, but for thumbs up thing on there, you can get them for like sixty quid. Like it's ridiculous. So the ecosystem for Fuji is something to consider. The ecosystem of Leica is something to <laughs> cry over. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's leave it there. Let's say no more. Um, but I would absolutely absolutely adore Fuji to come out with a black and white sensor. How cool would that be? I would be the first one to order a black and white one of these. Without a shadow of a doubt, I would order a black and white version of that. No choice about it, especially if it had better high ISO. Yes, do that for me, Fuji. I love you forever. Would I swap? Uh, I don't know. I have to say, I would always want an X100V. I'll... I don't know. I really don't. If the X100V um, follow up is is a higher res sensor like at the at the forty. Um, I don't. I might not see the need to upgrade. But basically, I want. I want, I'd love these files, these sharp files out of that with the Fuji color. So I do prefer Fuji colors to what I've seen from Leica colors. That's why I wanted the black and white. I just. I know. I know my classic chrome is all I ever need. I absolutely adore my classic chrome in in my, in my Fuji cameras. It's just beautiful very very little editing and i love that but at the same time the better focusing the, the sharper image the full frame look i suppose um and yes i'm one of these people that would absolutely adore if fuji brought out a full frame version of this uh fat chance that saggy pants i know but i would absolutely adore a full frame especially imagine a black and white a black and white version of this would be absolutely spectacular so yeah um i don't know one day hopefully i'll get my hands on one of these permanently but i don't know if it would replace any of my Fuji cameras, especially the X-T5 with the 18mm 1.4 uh, might solve the problem. It might, it might fix the itch. Anyway, do check out the zine. I hope this video has been helpful for you. And uh, yeah, on, on the website we do um, online workshops if you're looking to improve your photography, if you want to uh, understand how your camera works, if you want me to go through and help you critique your images or whatever like that. Um, but yeah, do check out the magazine and uh, support the channel that way. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know your thoughts of the Fuji versus the Leica ecosystem. I'd love to know what other people think. I know it's a constant argument there, but yeah, I think um, I think Fuji does really, really well, in especially for value for money. <laughs> especially for value for money. Anyway, see you in the next one. Take care.